welcome to my channel. Hi guys, how you all doing? Um, I, I thought I would just uh, give you a rundown on the agenda for today, which is going to be kind of easy. Um, I, I just need to pick up a couple of things, maybe for an upcoming recipe. I'm not sure. It'll be a vegetarian recipe. Um, stuffed cabbage rolls, uh, rice, mushrooms, maybe a little eggplant. And I think that might be about it. And um, I, I need to see if I can pick up those items. If not, I'll just pass up cooking this weekend. Also on the agenda for later on will be a continuation of the Melanie and the Air Disappearance. And I, I want to continue with Dennis because his um, involvement is quite lengthy. Um, involvement in the actual context of the crime. And I'm not sure about anything else much, although he seems like a mighty suspicious character. And so uh, that is where we're going to be heading for today. So um, depending on the traffic, I, I may just head out. Um, and, and pick up those things right away like that I, I can get it out of the way. So I'll see you guys later on on the road. Bye-bye. As, hi guys, so I am on the road and I did pick up my uh, stuff for the recipe, just a couple of things. And I'm also going to be making sauce for that recipe. So, um, you know, I'll show you the haul when I get home. Um, it, it's not a great big deal. But, um, I, you know, I do want to uh, make sure that you know exactly what I'm going to be putting into this recipe. And I'm going to do my best to keep fat out of it. I know I say that all the time, but I, you know, I don't want to use butter and oil and all that. But uh, if anything, I'll spray the pan and that's it. Um, because I know it's very hard to make tomato sauce without oil, right? So, um, yeah, I'm debating on what to do about that. So guys, I'm just on my way for a walk and maybe a little later on before I go home, I can have another little talk with you about Melanie at the air and her, her um, mysterious case because it, it's still pretty high profile. But we, we gather that she has um, more likely than being trafficked She's not around anymore, guys. I think her mom, Celine, really knew her daughter well. And she probably figured, well, if, you know, if uh, Melanie was kidnapped or, um, you know, trafficked, she would have found a way to be in touch with, with her mom, right? Um, no matter how dangerous it might have been. I, I really... Personally, I think the human trafficking theory is a good one, and it fell apart as soon as I got into the description of the character of Dennis Lavelle. And uh, so I no longer, I think that she is no longer alive, guys. So, unfortunately, what a beautiful, um, what a waste of a beautiful young life. You know, she had her whole future ahead of her. Gone. So I am on my way for a nice walk. And I'm a little earlier tonight, so I feel better about it. Uh, last night it was quite nippy. And it was late. And I, I made a poor choice. But I still walked uh, approximately a half an hour. And I, you know, I had things to do after that so I didn't want to get home very late and I didn't walk more than that but I should start trying to um, lengthen my walks. I do this every spring. I, I um, take my time walking and then probably by June, July I'm walking the full hour which feels so good to me but I have to take it easy because I've been doing a lot of heavy work 
and my legs, all that um, reaching and squatting, did a number on my back and my legs. What can I say? Well, I thought I was early, but um, stopping off for gas took about an hour. So I'm about <laughs> the same as I was last night, time-wise. And I don't like that. I get nervous when I'm walking after 8 p.m. So anyway, I'm heading out soon for the walk. That was a beautiful, amazing half hour walk, and it's only about 22 degrees. I was fine walking with long sleeves. Um, the air here is filled with lilacs. Can you imagine the, the odor, the scent of lilacs and honeysuckle? Um, that's probably one of the major reasons why I come here. It, I'm a very smelly person. <laughs> that didn't come out right. What I meant to say is that I go by smells, beautiful smells that transport me back into time. And as I mentioned before in one of my earliest vlogs, um, the smell of lilacs to me is family and home because my mother had a beautiful and humongous lilac tree. Well, it grew into a humongous lilac tree and we were the first owners of that house and I moved into our old house when I was um, 13, 12, 13. This summer I, I turned 13 and so um, you know the lilacs. I, I remember my mother immediately deciding where she wanted that tree and um, exactly how big it was going to be <laughs> And it used to just, um, well, we had a window screen in the kitchen, but it used to, every time my mom opened the window, the, the smell of lilacs would be so um, beautiful and amazing. And so I love lilacs. That was the whole point of that story. I, I It's um, all good memories for me. And so, um, okay, that's my story time for today. I'm going to head home and I may pull over and I grab something to drink because I'm parched. And I might continue with the story half here the rest at home. We'll have to see because um, I'm I'm very distracted by my cat, Micha, and it's hard for me to get going when I get through the door. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I am spending more time with Micha and she's behaving. Um, oh my goodness. I don't think I locked the doors, the kitchen doors. I just thought of it. I don't think I locked the kitchen doors. Oh my God. Um, so that's a scary thought. <laughs> anyway, we'll have to see what condition my plants are in now. I, oh, I hate that. You know, when you maybe leave something on at home, well, I left my kitchen door open. Big deal, but I have a cat <laughs> who snacks on lemongrass and then she gets violently sick. So I hope I didn't. I hope I didn't leave them open for her sake. Anyway, um, homeward. anywhere along the way. There was so much traffic. I figured if I stopped, I would be in at midnight. So um, it takes a good half hour. 
or more for um, me to get to that distance, uh, that location and back. So um, I decided to just um, come home immediately. And yes, I left the doors open, but um, Misha was just sitting very meekly in the hallway entry waiting for me. And the plants appeared to be untouched. And so um, she woke up from her nap, maybe very, uh, you know, not long before I came in. I, I know that she was down for her nap when I left. And probably that's why I forgot to close the doors. She was nowhere in sight. Um, so anyway, guys, I'm going to show you my little um, food haul. And um, I'll switch the view. So guys, I do like red cabbage as well, but this recipe calls for the uh, white cabbage or the green cabbage, whatever, and some rice and uh, mushrooms, but I'm deciding to throw the eggplants in as well. And it calls for some oxo cube. And because I'm not out of rice yet, but because I use um, quite a bit at a time for the starch solution. I might, I figured I might as well just get some more. And um, yes, I bought 10 tomatoes for the sauce. And so guys, all of that costs $25. And there you have it, my little cabbage roll grocery haul. Okay, guys, so I have some dinner simmering here, and um, I'm close by so I can regulate the heat of my cooktop. So, guys, um, I wanted to continue with the character of Mr. Dennis Lavelle um, regarding the disappearance of Melanie Evier in 1996. And so, um, uh, as you know, we left off last night uh, talking about um, uh, Dennis and his um, very lewd and, and horrible custom of, of trying to hook up with young little girls. And so, um, obviously, it came from his own child abuse, and so that is no excuse. He knew much, much better than that. And so, indeed, it takes a strong person to um, overcome those, um, those uh, how do you say this, um, those patterns of behavior that are hard to shake and, and do what you know is right and cast away everything that you were taught in your childhood because most likely many, many, many adults are suffering like this and they don't um, know where to get help. And if they try to get help, they get caught, they get arrested, they get charged. And so there's no way out for them. And this is a pattern that we have to try and find a way to stop, to prevent, to avoid, because this, this pattern of abuse, this cycle is vicious because it continues to go on and on and on. So, um, as you know, Dennis was in a long-term relationship with Sylvie Chartrand, who was um, Celine's very good friend. And so um, they, they remained, as I said yesterday, they remained in a relationship for almost four decades. And uh, until his death in 2016. And so um, according, according to um, family members, you know, um, Sylvie and her daughter, uh, he went after young women, their friends, um, children who came to the house. And um, he, he obviously did blame all of his bad behavior on his um, very bad upbringing, I guess. I don't have anything tangible to go on in front of me, but I, I can very much assure you that that is normally the cycle 
the way the cycle of abuse um, progresses. And so um, ah, we already went through uh, how he talked about being out of town, but nobody could verify it. His friends couldn't verify it very well. Nobody had a great memory of 1996. Wouldn't it have been better if police had just done that in 1996? Or maybe they did, and, and the records and reports got misfiled somewhere while, while that police um, department made that transition into a broader region. And so I don't know what happened, guys. Um, it's not normal that police investigate two decades later. You know what I'm saying? And so um, where did we leave off? So, um, okay, he, he made this comment to someone that he uh, did something to... Um, Melanie and another girl, and that they would never be found. We don't know if he was just bragging, if it was medication, talking, or what. So, guys, um, let's get on to part six now. Um, on one occasion, and I think it was the year 2000, the way it's described in this article, um, Dennis Lavelle followed one of his daughter's friends who had come to the house to uh, socialize with Stephanie, uh, who was Sylvie's daughter. And so um, uh, she went into the sunroom and, uh, of his house. Okay, so... Now I'm confused. Was it not Sylvie's house? It was his house. Okay, whatever. Um, regardless of where it was, he committed a crime. And so he told this little girl that he would like to um, take her to the heights of an adult experience. And I'm not even sure. I, I Let me tell you one thing, guys. If it had been me, even at 18 years old, and this is shameful, I would not have known what he meant. <laughs> I And it's not funny. It's just that a little girl might not even be aware of what he was talking about. And so do you see how child abuse gets unreported? Because it's not detected, right? You know, if you're a little girl doesn't understand the language of this 40-some-odd, 30-some-odd-year-old man, nothing's going to get noticed, and then your child is going to be continued to be abused and harassed and exposed to this naughty, naughty behavior. And indeed, this is very naughty. And so Dennis had a falling out with his brothers around the time of 2000. And so um, one of them, the point of the fight was that one of them made it clear he was no longer allowed to stay around his niece, which probably would have been um, somebody on his wife's side of the family. I don't know. The term is niece. And so years later, Dennis was um, briefly jailed twice for, for assaulting his neighbor's friend in the family home as his daughter, um, S Stephanie, and his partner, Sylvie, slept. He was acquitted in court and released in 2014. Okay, even granted all this evidence, even if he blurted it out, it still doesn't mean that he is the culprit behind the disappearance of Melanie Avier. But it certainly does seem that way, doesn't it, guys? So, um, he was also sentenced to serve time in prison after actually pleading guilty to a similar offense with another child and was released after only several months. Um, where is public health and safety in all this? 
Don't they have any issues with these ridiculous sentences? Um, guys, I, I, I don't see it. I don't understand it. Somebody out there will help me understand because I, I, I can't. I can't do it by myself. I'm trying and I can't. And so, um, Dennis's stepson also said that um, his uncle Andre, who would have been Dennis's brother, um, and also allegedly with Dennis on the weekend of Melanie's disappearance, had also made lewd comments about a 12-year-old child in the early 1990s. So both brothers, Andre and Dennis, were, were horribly abused. And so why did they think that this behavior was acceptable? They knew it wasn't, but they still didn't seem to want to put a lid on it. So um, that's that part of the story. And um, I, I, right now I'm so upset, I can't think clearly, but um, <laughs> on multiple occasions, uh, Dennis lured, okay, he lured teenagers, teenage females, to hotel rooms, often telling them or their families that he needed a babysitter for a non-existent child. So do you see how he was a scammer and he lured other children? He tried to exploit them for money. And, and yet it was all a ploy. There were no children to babysit. And around 10 years after Melanie disappeared, uh, which would have been 2006, uh, Dennis lured her younger sister, Jessie, with a similar trick. So guys, I'm not, I'm not um, doubting at all that Dennis was the attacker. Dennis was the, Dennis was the reason that, um, Melanie went missing and is still not able, we are still not able to find her traces at all. And so um, Dennis's father had recently died and he offered um, uh, Jesse work cleaning his mother's house that afternoon, but he instead drove her to a hotel on the outskirts of New Listed New rescued, and he coaxed her inside the hotel room. So Dennis's father locked the door and consumed a, a very significant amount of um, street drugs while getting undressed and making lewd comments towards Jesse. She was abused, guys. I don't think there's any way that uh, Celine or the police or anyone can doubt the involvement of this family, the Lavelle family, with the disappearance of Melanie and the other. You can't doubt it. Just because we don't have evidence, okay, we can't, we could never have them um, officially charged, but I, I do think that police may be might have tried to keep, keep closer tabs on Dennis, watch where he went, because there were other situations. Goodness knows how many other girls um, he might have gotten to, and police were not really following up on these suspicions. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, it's, a, it's a crying shame that nothing ever was done about Dennis. So now, do you understand why I believe that maybe the woman, the young woman who ran Dennis over and caused him all that pain and anguish <laughs> really intended to harm him permanently and put him out of his misery and not just harm him seriously? 
I really think that this has a lot to do with that accident. And I'm not going to say he deserved it or he didn't. Nobody deserves anything like that. But he still should have been punished for his horrible and horrific deeds and actions and words against these youngsters who were barely in their teens. Uh, another witness, uh, a victim actually, who um, is known only as Josephine in the articles that mentioned her, um, she was interviewed and um, she said that Dennis came to Sudbury, her home city, and arranged for her, again, to babysit for his girlfriend, Sylvie, at a remote hotel. And, but he confessed later, a little later, that this was a lie. While driving her there, he kidnapped her. And um, he then spent the next two hours commenting lewdly on her body while drinking extremely heavily. Um, this reminds me so much of um, Calvin Hoover, who was a very, very heavy drinker. Although I don't know if he drank anything else but beer, still, um, all these men seem to have um, horrific skeletons in their closet. Uh, demons uh, that they needed to dispel from their, their minds and their life. Um, I, I don't know the mindset of an abused child who grows up to be an adult, but it must indeed be very, very, very nightmarish and traumatizing. You never get over that trauma, right? So, um, anyway, uh, Dennis later uh, spread rumors that they had, um, uh, he spread rumors about them that were false and he led the other people to believe that the relationship actually um, went to another level when it actually was just a lie. And so, um, you know, uh, his behavior led her to believe that he was responsible for uh, assaulting, attacking, and making Melanie disappear. And saying that he might have tried a similar um, plot on her and reacted violently if she rebuked him. Uh, so I think this is another typo. I, I think he tried to use the, the story about Melanie. Don't forget, this is after Melanie went missing. Um, he told this woman he would do the same thing to her if she didn't give in to him. So that, there's a confession. But I don't understand. Uh, this was in 2012 this thing that occurred with the woman in Sudbury. I don't understand why we were never made aware of it. Only after he passed away. How can that many people who don't know each other all be saying the same thing about this monster? And so, um, you know, in 2012, uh, Dennis arranged for a teenager to babysit his granddaughter, for real, which she, he did have a granddaughter, I should say. Um, but she found it to be a lie when she arrived at his hotel room and Dennis began to um, engage in other activities. So the girl later pressed charges and... That is what is missing from all of these cases, guys. Women are not strong enough, and police are cowards too. Instead of simply filing reports, they reject anything that doesn't have footage. Anyway. I am mad. I, you can see that I'm mad. 
So um, she did press charges and he was charged with criminal offenses at least three times, but back in 2006 for failing to comply with orders not to associate or communicate with several people. So he had restraining orders on him. Guys, this guy was a mess. He was a mess. He was a mess. Um, he made death threats. He assaulted with a vehicle, which happens to me almost, I don't want to say how often, but too often. And um, possessing a taser gun and violating terms of his parole. And in 2013, um, for uh, also going after somebody under the age of 16 for dates and, and pleasure and fun. He never, ever, ever stopped. You will make what you will out of this. I think we found a culprit who was indeed never punished. And it reminds me a little of the Alison Perot case where her violator and murderer put himself back into jail in order to hide from the investigation. And he was in prison in and out, and so it never really um, became part of the investigation. This is ridiculous. This is shoddy work. And this part here, yes, I have complaints about. Um, there's no use anybody saying that nobody knows what happened to Melanie. I know. I ain't that stupid. And Dennis should have been doing time for the rest of his life, not for two minutes. I don't understand police. I don't understand. Somebody help me understand because I don't. And so guys, now that we know about his character, um, I think it's essential to go back a little and um, remind you of the episode where I was talking about the sniffer dogs in the Madeline McCann case. And remember how I said they were pups and, you know, even though sniffer dogs know what they're doing, they can be trained. Um, they can be trained however you want them to be trained. And there are chemicals that mimic certain smells. Anyway, guys, remember what I was saying about how in this case, I think it was two, two episodes ago. I'm not sure. Maybe the first episode, the second. Um, that he, Dennis offered the services of his dog as a sniffer dog to hunt for Melanie. Why? Are you now understanding why they didn't find Melanie's remains? Although uh, by now, goodness knows what he had done with them. It's too many years have gone by. But with the initial search, his dog, who was loyal to Dennis and not to Melanie, God knows how he was trained, that dog. I think that's a picture of him that I flashed by at the end of this video. Um, that dog couldn't have been trained in the official way. Why were police so trusting? Uh, you know, I don't understand any of this. I really don't. So guys, we're still not done with um, uh, the part uh, of the story that includes Dennis Lavelle. And so I think I'm going to break off here because this is getting a, a, a bit long and I don't want it to go on and on and on. I, I want it to be concise and fresh and, uh, you know, very clear 
clearly detailed. I don't want things to drag on and on. And I know that once I start getting tired, uh, my clarity and my focus starts to die down. <laughs> so I think we should leave part six as it is for now. And um, yes, the last, the last part um, would have included um, him illegally making death threats and using a taser and um, uh, assault with a deadly weapon, which was a vehicle, and um, trying to go after children under 16. So um, on top of all that, he violated his uh, parole, the terms of his parole, and so he was a bad guy. He was a bad guy. Nobody can convince me that he didn't have anything to do with this. Um, now I, I really do understand the case a little bit better because even going over it in print and then saying it, it's a little d different. Uh, it's more confirmed in my mind that Dennis Lavelle is the guy. And shame on the police for not, um, you know, for trusting him. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I don't understand how he got away with murder charges. I don't understand it. Anyway, um, I guess because the body wasn't around, they had nothing to hold him on. I don't want to think about it. So thank you very much for coming along with me on my walk today. And um, it's always better when you're there with me. And so um, thank you for listening and watching. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. Next time, part seven. And for tomorrow, I think I'll, I'll give this a little break, a little rest, and just work on the cabbage roll recipe for a couple of days and see how that goes. Um, anyway, um, take care and have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.